This is episode three of um, The Buzz On. <laughs> this is Kelly. She's our science director and customer service person. Yeah. You reach her first. <laughs> and this is Dave Hunter. He is our fearless leader, founder, and oh, oh, okay. <laughs> owner of Crown Bees. <laughs> Whatever. That does a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. The, um, we this, all wear a lot of hats. <laughs> yeah. The topic here, we're, we looked at where this um, industry or backyard hobby, mm -hmm. Mason Bees, it's just moved from um, something obscure 20 years ago to here. And we just kind of want to take you through some of these um, cool things that are now part of today's use of the bee. The right? solutions. How can we solve all those little hiccups? So that the bees thrive. Yes. Right. Okay. So a um, long time ago, uh, the world was to mason bees just a block of wood. Okay. And you drilled holes in the block of wood and 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 all of them the same size yep yep so then um it kind of dawned on us that uh there are a variety of small and medium and, and large bees across the country and they show up in the early spring all the way through gosh late august so there's a variety of sizes of bees okay one size does not fit all right so then um there was across the country we as we started off we just kept on shipping um mason bees from washington state this is a long years ago out across the country and there's a, a great uh dr bill kemp was the usda lead somebody on the whole western us and he went out and had this regime uh for his utah bees and i reached out to him and said hey bill my washington summers are different than your utah summers he goes Oh, <laughs> that it, happens in Washington. <laughs> yeah, he goes, oh, that's different. I said, so the bees of Texas, the same bee is in Texas and in Maine. He goes, yeah, come to think of it, they all have different heat regimes. Okay. So um, we created a thing called Eco Regions. And so now we have different regions across the U.S. that have the similar type of um, heat regimes. Okay. And that's what we're going for. And we have people all within these different regions getting bees for us they ship them to us so this bee buyback is our one of our innovations yes. that we have the people using the getting the bees from their area and it's so simple you have extra bees you send them and sell them to us we exchange them for money or for nesting materials and then we take those bees and send them right back into your community so you have neighbors and friends who are enjoying your extra cocoons it's right. a great way to okay. get new people started so now we're pushing this is you know this is 2025 we're pushing this a little bit further um what if you in your county or your city or whatever who participate in seed exchanges start persist participating in cocoon exchanges our local libraries are doing that with seed exchanges and we're trying to encourage them to include the cocoons so reach out to your libraries, to your wildwind chapters, to your native gardeners and say, hey, right. you've got the seeds. I've okay. got the cocoons. Let's make a beautiful garden. And it isn't just the mud one. There are bees that use resin or cactus mm -hmm. pulp. There's just a variety of wasps that are out there that if these could be exchanged, this is going to be tighter and better to, again, find more bees and, and have the love of bees. Have better further. gardens. Absolutely. Okay. More food on the table. All right. So um, innovation of mud uh <laughs> years ago um not that long ago i reached out to a whole bunch of my teammates and researchers i said you know what if i put a um, mud using bee into a desert what's going to happen to that bee one miserable bee right and it's like <laughs> no mud bee. no clay so then i said okay now okay say same concept i'm gonna take a cactus pulp using bee and bring it up here to the northwest what do you think is going to happen to that very unhappy bee, no cactus. <laughs> no cactus, right. Okay. So I said, do you guys think that if you added mud to a yard or to an orchard, the bees might be better there? And Dave, went, everybody has mud. It's clay. You clay. need clay. <laughs> that one. Okay. And so um, moist clay. <laughs> Makes a difference in your success. You're going to have successful bees because they need the doors. They if she they doesn't need have the doors for her kids, she's out. All right. So next one was um, how to attract bees to a bee hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I started off years ago, I actually, I kind of hid my house. I would put my house. Well, I didn't want people to see it. I mean, it just was. It, 
and the bees didn't find it that well. And so since then, I mean, the, the invention of um, bees want to find morning sun and you have it right out where beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if you see beauty and bees, then put it front and center, get it out there. So it gets morning sunshine. I level where you can check it out and see it and enjoy it. Right. Okay. Um, we also learned early on that um, in my, well, your yard is pristine. She is, <laughs> she's, she's a great gardener, okay? pristine. And I live next door to her and I just spray chemicals on my lawn and my, you know, so guess what happens to her bees? Just because he has a great green lawn does not mean I find it beautiful. Right. right. And a great way to kind of get that conversation started is taking tomatoes over to your neighbor and saying, hey, I have got some amazing tomatoes. If you didn't spray your yard, I would have more bees, more tomatoes. Can we kind of work together so that when my bees are flying, you lay off on the spraying and the chemicals and we can share this bounty? So we're going to call this innovation uh, communication. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking with your neighbor. Um, and then um, as we kind of move forward, uh, there's some great teammates of ours, uh, Teresa, Dr. P Teresa mm, Pitzinger out of yeah. um, USDA. She had a teammate, Steve Peterson. They worked for a few years on um, the pheromone that would attract um, all of the Osmia species, 350 species of bees across the country, world. And so here's invited bees. So down, bees smell <laughs> with their antennas. Okay, that's why you have this bee up here, okay? and by having a pheromone, you know, a really mm -hmm. cool invention by having this pheromone, bees will come investigate, oh, someone must have nested here before. It's a safe, interesting, great spot. Okay. Very attractive. Okay, so same bee, the eyes. Um, recent, this mm -hmm. is, we'll blame this on the science director <laughs> here, recent innovation of? Uh, bees see differently. And so when we have our bee pops, we see the colors. Bees are seeing the UV layer on top of those colors. And it's like a nice billboard that says, hey, come check out this spot. Yeah, it's, it's a flower. Mm. Well, they get a little disappointed that it's not yeah. a flower, but they find the nesting area. And we're lucky with the invited bee to have that scent like home. So it makes the whole house just more attractive. It's a good neighborhood to raise kids. <laughs> and, that, and that's innovation. That's kind of a fun thing. All right. Um, pests. Uh, mm. The Let's go back a, a long time ago. Well, okay. If you do nothing, there's a whole lot of there's pollen mites and there's parasitic wasps and there's yep. fungus and all these things that when you aggregate a whole bunch of poles in one tight space, these pests, God, smorgasbord of deliciousness, pollen and nectar and larvae and all these little things. Uh, back in nature, hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, mm -hmm. it was just a hole in a tree, easy to find. And that hole deteriorated over a year and it wasn't used again. But now those great grass neighbors do not want dead trees in their yard. So we're getting rid of all the things that would be a natural place for our bees to right. find a home. So so you take a pest at a time as we're learning. Here's pollen mite. And, <laughs> and these pollen mites are in the yard and they're just part of nature. And, and it's really symbiotic and the bees carry back and forth. We wanted to get rid of it earlier. One of my teammates, Gordon out of Canada, he <laughs> shout out to Gordon, <laughs> flames here and he's dropping all his cocoons through these flames that didn't damage the bees, but did the mites die? And then we decided that, you no, know, no. a little bit is not a problem. Just like you have microbes in your gut, these pollen mites are just normal part of your environment. A little goes a long way. And as long as you keep knocking those populations down, right. you're ahead of the game. The kitchen sink doesn't need, nature yeah. doesn't need that kitchen sink. And we owe yeah. this to uh, Sean Steffens out of uh, Wisconsin. He was a great researcher and, and, is a great researcher and taught us the awesomeness of <laughs> microbes. Leave some home because you need them. Leave some there. Okay. So I guess the innovation here is since we're as a humans, you know, having too many things too tight, the innovation is um, to care harvest. for your bees, harvest, just provide fresh nesting holes. Mm -hmm. Right. You just want to keep all the bad things knocked down. So okay. knock down the pests and keep the cocoons. So in this innovation, if you look then for, um, I'm gonna call them pieces of stuff, houses made um, elsewhere. Uh, these are all examples that you can get online from big companies. Um, you, Their holes are glued in, they're bamboo, they're drilled blocks of wood. This isn't- They're disasters for the bees. Basically you're raising pests. Okay. So it's beautiful and they're really cute, but honestly, put them on your wall inside your house as decor <laughs> and save the bees by giving that them one. a healthy house. Yeah, that was, that was good. I like that. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so 
this innovation would be um, learn if you want your bees to thrive, and we're not talking a lot of work, you would be harvesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep it simple. Um, oh, also one of the other pests out there was a, uh, um, that the ovipositor is the stingy part of this pest, yeah. can go right through there and just wipes out your bees in either one of these situations by having them together. That's actually kind of funny. They use their antennas and they tap along there sonically to hear where the little arbors. And so by having them together, we think that disrupts it. Okay. And that same little pest. Um, tiny, we, tiny little, tiny little, thing. little pest. We used to have just the cardboard with the wood trays and this little wasp would get right between there and get all of the females on the backside. You'd lose 10% mm -hmm. of your bees to this, this wasp. So, ah, the invention of the pest blocker. You know, just ta -da! Ta -da! You know, all right. Um, but it solves the problem, and that's what we want to do. Okay, so now um, out of that, we now have um, different little predators, mm -hmm. ants. Oh, man. Everyone will call and say, okay, what do I do with these ants that are just climbing up the pole? It's a big problem. So we worked with another company, and they have this fantastic product, Ant Camp. And, and really, it's just they make a surface so slippery, the ants and centipedes, mm -hmm. whatever little buggies, just can't crawl up. It's like, so you could put this on your honeybee hut. I mean, yeah. That's a great innovation from... And it's so simple and easy for everyone to use, and it works. Okay. Um, How about I have, Craig the Crow? I have crows. <laughs> we live in Bothell, and this area has a lot of crows. And one of them likes to just sit on top of my bee house and throw all the reeds everywhere. And so one of the solutions was to put a bird guard on there, and that way he can't get into them. He doesn't want to eat anything. He just okay. wants to make a mess. Okay, and I've had other birds in my ears where I have my bees would come out early sunny morning and they're all just sitting yeah. there on the face right here and then i went by like an hour later and they're all just gone and a couple little bees were on top one <laughs> it's just like oh, traumatized someone, yeah okay so um pests um okay so we've talked about the innovations of how you could find a place mm -hmm. find your find your bee house but now um how do the bees choose their own little hole yep. inside and so um this here we go hold that up. <laughs> Uh, we realized that, um, again, back in the day, the bees could find this one little hole in a tree super easy. But when we aggregate all of these holes tightly, they, they didn't evolve to try this out. And so basically, when you go into those apartment buildings and you're looking around and all the apartment buildings are gray, you have a hard time finding the exact one you need to go to. But if you know that Joe lives in the red building, you can look over. There it is and you can just go right to it. It keeps it simple and it takes a lot less energy and stress. Right. And that's what we're hoping is working with the bees is that it's not creating problems, it's creating solutions. So this was a simple one with trays. Um, we then went out and uh, <laughs> thought through, well, when you're using B tube and inserts, they also kind of look the same. Having just a whole bunch of sticks and everything, not mm -hmm. putting this uniformly together, but just a, a keep jumble. it messy, make it chaotic. Good word. So give them waypoints to find. Okay, I am right next to this particular stick. So whether you're using reeds or or B tube and inserts, mm -hmm. you're just making it messy. So the in invention is um keep the it, innovation keep is it chaotic. <laughs> so they can easily find. Okay, so then we started thinking a little differently. Now this doesn't go well with the green screen, but very this will be we're putting this out this week. Um, we've actually taken um what is it avant-garde um, <laughs> avant-garde <laughs> yeah so we painted the fronts of these trays with four different colors and just wild splatting uh, we're very comfortable the bees but it's will scientifically based that's oh, the oh, point okay. dave did an experiment where he took the the wood trays and half of them were painted and half of it wasn't and the bees preferentially went right to that painted side yep. and it wasn't it didn't matter if it was horizontal or vertical that was where they Only chose to go the, first and it wasn't the colors it was just yep. the differentiation. So this could have been black and white. But when finally when all the color holes filled up, then it went to um, mm -hmm. then went to the, the bees went to that one. So yep. So if you have an opportunity to paint your wood trays, please do so. That will help tremendously. So am I now kind of a scientist too? Is that how yes, it works? you are. You are definitely a scientist. <laughs> Dr. Good. Dave. Dr. Dave. Okay. And then um well, probably one of the last little ones is um, when you actually have your cocoons back in the day back in the day makes me sound yeah. so old um <laughs> we would always say put your cocoons on top of your right. nesting material or whatever ah no what about if you have a cocoon hatchery where you're putting your cocoons into a top part and they're safe from the birds or whoever trying to get to them 
um, simple innovation. And they're easy to do at home too. You know, something as simple as also a medicine bottle. Also disappearing because it's green, but yeah. Yeah, well, disappearing. Yeah. But there are many ways that you can just take these ideas and bring them in and have fantastic luck with your bees. And so you do have a house that you can't harvest from. The little innovation of, ah, we just yeah. call it move day or whatever you want to do. By keeping all of the bees from, they can exit as the pests are exiting as well. Mm -hmm. You can keep them tightly in here. You can smush the Houdini flies. When the bees are let out every single day, you're able to have them transfer from something old to your new nested holes on top. So they can't get back in. And that's the key point is that the bees can't go back into those dirty houses. Right. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> this is innovation. This has been 20 years worth of just the fun of this. All um, oh, and a lot of this, we got a lot of these ideas from you. From our when customers. you are reaching out to us saying, here is an issue that I'm having trouble with. We're listening. We're working with you. Let's see if we can get solutions out there. We want you to work together. Reach out to your neighbors. I've got extra cocoons. Let's exchange seeds. Let's exchange cocoons. Reach out to your library, your Wild Ones chapters. So, There's so many places that you can make those connections. Yeah. So help us, um, help us continue to help you. We're a company that likes to innovate, and um, it's all about you guys. So thanks for watching. Um, keep things messy. <laughs> <laughs> keep things messy. Bye. What? I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> I did nothing wrong. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I did everything wrong. I think that went pretty well. We'll have to watch.